Hello and welcome everyone at EmacsConf 2022. I'm Andrew Tropin and today we will talk about my Emacs setup. I will tell you the story behind it. Uh, we will discuss what, what RD and RD Emacs are and we'll make a small Emacs configuration. My original motivation was to have a ready for work development environment, which is reliable and granted to work uh, every time I need it. Preferably performant and consistent. I say development environment, but it actually applies to many other working environment, especially text heavy. And easy and obvious solution is to pick one of existing configuration frameworks like SpaceMax or Doom Emacs, Prelude or something else, and uh, to get a pre-configured Emacs in a minutes with all bells and whistles. But the problem, it's only Emacs. In reality, your working, uh, your working environment consists not only from ELIS packages, but also from system packages and their configurations, project libraries, compilers, building tools, etc. And those uh, you already have uh, at least three or more likely five things for managing your environment. Uh, configuration, Emacs configuration framework, Emacs package manager, system package manager, uh, system or and dot files configuration manager, project language package manager, and maybe something else. Even having our Emacs configuration and uh, package manager covered by framework, we still have a lot of things which we have to interact with, keep in sync and more import importantly, each of them can break. But uh, by works every time, I mean, even if I updated uh, my system packages, configurations, I migrated to a different machine, uh, someone uh, on my team updated project dependencies, I can get back to work in a matter of seconds, or maybe in some cases, minutes. Uh, if I have multiple tools for managing my environment and uh, even one of them is broken, the whole setup is broken. Also, if one of them doesn't support deterministic rollback, I can't uh, guarantee the re reliability of my working environment. I can't uh, be sure that I will be able to rescue or revive it. The less points of failure uh, we have, the easier to stay sane. Imagine some late breakage notice when you did update a few hours or days ago and found it later and you have a few different tools involved. It will be really hard uh, to find the cause and to make everything works again. Is it possible to have one tool to cover all the needs uh, I described above? Yes, almost. And also with uh, this tool you can get a reliable setup. And now uh, I talk about functional package managers. Functional package managers allows to manage system, user, Emacs, project, language, uh, packages and their configurations. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it allows to do it in a declarative and reproducible manner. That means you just define what you need and those tools build it for you. No matter what was before, you get what you asked for. It doesn't matter what time of day, what you did before, what other packages you have installed previously, you just ask for uh, you just ask for something and you get it. Two years ago, I did a talk at EmacsConf 2020, where I demonstrated a prototype of a Max configuration managed by Nix. Originally, I wanted to base my work on already existing Max configuration framework, um, but later I decided that it will be easier and a little more flexible to start from ground up. 
After first prototype in Nix, I decided to switch to Geeks to make it uh, to make it short. Geeks is another functional package manager, but uh, more freedom and reproducibility oriented, and written in only one language, Guile scheme, instead of few custom made Nix, DSL, uh, Bash, and C++. So now I can write Lisp code while this code writing another Lisp code. Very neat indeed. Unfortunately, at the moment uh, there was no tool to manage user configurations, also known as dot .files with gigs. So I wrote one. And now it's a part of GNU gigs and called gigs home. What we get from this one tool? We can use one language uh, to describe the whole system, the uh, home environment, the project environment, and everything else. We don't need to worry about uh, to keep different tools in sync and to integrate them between each other. Also, using one language uh, to describe the whole configuration makes it possible to share values between different parts of the system. For example, color scheme, fonts, and much more. Okay, uh, to sum up the first part of the talk. Uh, I want to work in an environment which is ready for work, configured in minutes uh, to almost what I want. That means it should have some batteries included. It should be reliable. I want to get back to work in a second, even if I broke something or someone else broke something. Uh, for example, using crawlbacks. And uh, it would be nice if it will be performant. Uh, it's a little subjective thing, but uh, it's nice when things are snappy. And it's cool when things are consistent. Different interfaces have the same way of interactions with them. Okay, let's get to the next part and let's discuss what RD is. Originally it was my .files repo, but it grew in something bigger. Now it's a set of tools on top of GNU Geeks, Geeks System and Geeks Home. You can treat it as a GNU Linux distribution, system and home environment manager or configuration framework project environment manager like virtualenv but on steroids and uh, emacs distribution uh, usually you just pick a few features parameterize them and ask the tool to create an operating system for you a home environment or project environment or emacs configuration that's it that's simple uh, and what are the Max is and how it tastes. It's like an ice cream, vanilla flavored. No fancy macros uh, for configuration, just plain Elisp. You can find in almost uh, every personal Emacs configuration. Uh, Built-in or vanilla flavored packages are uh, in priority over external or very fancy packages uh, that um, there's practical reason for this. Maybe sometimes you don't get the things you used to in other text editors or maybe even in other uh, Emacs frameworks, but uh, we want to keep the final result consistent so you can apply the same interaction patterns in different situations and extend your expectations from one tool to another, from one package to another. For example, we encourage uh, people to use the mini buffer completion with orderless Evertica for many tasks, code navigation, files navigations, uh, looking through your emails or just for jumping around. Uh, let's see, let's just create a new Emacs instance and open a repository uh, with my configuration. Okay, you can see the source code. Uh, let's open another file which contains Emacs related features. And you can see I use iMenu and I can 
filter uh, the list using mini buffer. Now let's open my git interface and now I want to navigate through uh, this long list of things here. Some of them staged, uh, some of them are recent commits, some of them untracked at all. I can open a menu, the same interface, but for now I can navigate uh, around the Magit sections and files uh, which are present here. And if I want to navigate project files, I use almost the same interface. I can use the same uh, patterns uh, to filter out uh, files in my project or items in Majid I menu. You can see very similar and very consistent. Also, we have to try uh, hotkeys uh, consistent across different packages and uh, parts of Emacs. We usually not provide alternatives on what to use. We provide only one package for one task. But of course, uh, this is a configuration framework after all. You can declare your own features and uh, implement them yourself and use whatever you want. Okay, let's get to some real world examples. It's always easy to show how things get appended, how things get installed, but usually people don't show how they remove things because it's usually painful. But in our case, it's not. Let's take a my configuration, let's find uh, feature Vertigo. Vertigo just used to show uh, this fancy uh, completion UI that you can see here. And if I disable this feature and rebuild, oops, rebuild my home environment, the mm, Emacs will uh, lock this feature. It may uh, take some time, but it was quite fast. I didn't ex expect it. Uh, okay, I have Emacs and as you can see here, now it doesn't have this completion UI anymore. I just commented it out rebuilt my whole home environment and this uh, thing disappeared from Emacs. But uh, what if I broke something? I just call geeks home rollback command and launch Emacs again and you see now we have vertical back. Very good. Uh, Reliability is one of the most important quality of working environment. We can always get back to the working state of our environment and be sure that we do the things we want. Okay, and now let's see another example. Here I have a Mastodon a post which contains Gemini link. I can click it and you see it opens Emacs client uh, and it renders this uh, Gemini, Gemini capsule and we can read all the posts of this guy. Very cool. But what if I go back to my configuration, we'll find a feature related uh, to Elfer, the application which handles uh, Gemini links and we'll comment it out and we'll rebuild my home environment. What I expect here that when I will be clicking the link, Emacs client won't uh, pop up anymore. Cool. We rebuilt it and let's click the link and now you see 
it just opens another tab which doesn't do anything useful. Cool. Uh, why it is important? Uh, it is important because every time you install something uh, and you want to remove it, some parts depending on it can can be broken. And also it important in other way around. Uh, sometimes you want to install something and it requires a few steps. For example, if you want uh, to have a Docker uh, EL in your Emacs, uh, you need not only uh, Docker EL, EL, EL itself and configuration for it, you also need to add your user to the Docker group. But before it, you need to create this group. And you also need to uh, define a system service and run it. Uh, also, you need to install Docker package, Docker CLI package, and container D package. And you can forget uh, every of uh, this small step. Uh, but if it in your uh, declarative configuration in one place, and you just ask to enable this feature, uh, each of those steps will be performed automatically. And if you don't need Docker anymore, you just disable feature and all the effect of all those steps will be removed from your system. I won't be showing it because it probably will take uh, more time for reconfiguring, but you can uh, experiment uh, with it on your own. Okay, let's uh, do another uh, interesting thing. Let's construct a small Emacs configuration from the scratch. What's this? I will open a file which contains only Emacs portable feature and feature user info. And now I will build an environment and inside this environment I will launch a new Emacs instance. As you see, it's very different from what you saw previously. And uh, it almost bare bone. It doesn't contain anything except user mail address, which is set to my mail address and user full name. How it works. In feature user info, I define a few uh, values and those values uh, obtained by Emacs a feature Emacs portable and set uh, inside Emacs configuration. But uh, let's enable, enable a few more features. Uh, I will do it in one go because we, we already saw how, how it uh, works overall. And let's build another Emacs with Emacs configuration. The interesting thing about uh, this Emacs instance, it doesn't uh, contain uh, anything that I have in my usual Emacs. For example, I don't have not, not, not much here. Uh, I don't have make installed and so on. Uh, but we have uh, feature loader portable package, which just requires a few configure packages. Let's move it to a separate workspace. First of all, uh, configure RD max portable, which just sets a few variables. RD configure keycast, which just shows uh, something on the uh, mod line, which demonstrates the last hotkey pressed and the command uh, which was invoked. Also, we can enable which key and now when I type a prefix, I can see all the possible continuations for this prefix. And I can enable Vertica. And you can see now we have a nice completion UI. Also, we can uh, 
enable completion related improvements. And now I have not only UI itself, but also some nodes here near each comment and uh, ability to use uh, regular expressions or uh, some orderless matching. Okay, we can enable eShell and now I have a hotkey for invoking uh, Emacs shell. Uh, I don't have hotkey for vTerm yet, but I can enable it. And now I have a terminal inside my Emacs. As you can see, my usual shell is ZSH, but here I have a plain uh, bash. Okay, let's enable uh, feature git and now I will be able uh, to open my project. And inside this project, uh, I will be able to open Majit and navigate using Kaimenu around. Let's do a few more things. Let's enable org rom. Uh, so I will be able to open my Emacs conf nodes. Uh, cool. And let's enable configure Emacs. As you can see, the way it displayed uh, updated and let's enable configure appearance and you see the appearance of max changed radically and also let's change the faces and now you see almost all, almost my uh, setup that you saw previously uh, but we build it from small tiny pieces okay A little summary. RD is a one tool that you can use to manage the whole computing experience. It consists of composable uh, components uh, and actually it provides a reliable configuration framework. You always have a rollback. You always can switch to generation you used a week ago. And of course it's uh, reproducible and declarative, which is also very cool. RD Max is a part of RD, but it can be used separately. You can think of it as an Emacs distribution, which is vanilla flavored, consistent, well integrated and self-contained. That's it for today. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me via email or any other way. Thank you everyone for your attention and see you in a bit.